Hey, awesome person, how are you? The date is November 29, 2015. I'm wearing my awesome astronaut t-shirt. And this is Space News with What The Math. Welcome and enjoy. And news number one is this. You're watching this on the screen right now. This is the first autonomous landing of a spacecraft. Uh, sp not a spacecraft, a reusable rocket. Uh, this is a rocket made by, I believe, a company called Blue Origin that you see right here. And this was on November 23rd, 2015. They were the first to land a rocket, or I guess one of the first to land uh, a rocket completely autonomously, uh, meaning that they can now create these uh, rockets that will launch people to space. And... Uh, Specifically, this is for space tourism. You can see the repeat of how beautiful this was executed. And I, I think uh, somewhere out there, Elon Musk right now is probably crying because he was not the first to do this. But in his defense, though, his rockets are a lot more complex and are meant for delivering astronauts to International Space Station, which is this rocket is not actually meant for. Nevertheless, they're still happy and you should celebrate with them and uh, watch the video in the description below. Also, you may not know this, but uh, this week was 100 uh, year celebration of Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. This is when he actually talked about gravitation and uh, how he thinks it actually works. And even today, we still haven't completely proven it, but we know that he was most likely completely correct. And so there's a lot of really cool experiments that are trying to investigate these uh, ripple effects of uh, space-time. And there's actually a, a huge experiment that started uh, sometime uh, in the past week in Italy where they've actually created this really, really long sort of construction that will try to detect uh, gravitational waves uh, from space. And here's actually a very simple schematic of how it's going to work, but you should definitely read about this in, in the article that I'm posting in the description below because it's a pretty awesome experiment and it will hopefully prove Einstein's theory. Also, related to the video I posted last week about quasars and blazars, there's a really cool article from last week uh, where a scientist by the name Stephanie Lamassa explains how she discovered uh, all of these uh, quasars that are actually disappearing. They are changing in brightness, they're changing their luminosity, and uh, all of this is happening within a 10-year period, not even millions of years or thousands of years, within a few years. And this is a pretty cool article, and it kind of gives us a new uh, idea of how little we actually know about quasars and blazars and how possibly different they are from any other objects that we know in the universe. So read about this in the description below. Now for something completely different, this is actually a picture of the day. This is an actual image of space, and if you scroll over it, you'll see where this is located. Here's Betelgeuse, our favorite star, or second or third favorite star, that is absolutely gorgeous and huge and, and, and amazing. Uh, the Bellatrix, Mesa, uh, something called Lambda Orionis, and... Uh, and of course, Orion Nebula right here, Rigel and a lot of other objects. Now, what I really like about this is that how it's actually labeled for us and how this is actually an, a picture that's been taken over 212 hours. In other words, this was an image that was exposed for 212 hours with a camera from, from our planet and this is what it, it resulted in. So this is a pretty beautiful image. But if you're actually trying to make one yourself, uh, don't rush into this. It actually took this person uh, several years, or actually at least two years, to try to create this out of 1,400 different pictures, separate pictures that were then combined into one. So I think it's a pretty awesome picture, and it definitely teaches you a little bit more about uh, what our night sky looks like. Also, another interesting article from space.com uh, tells us about why we think our moon, and here I'm going to show it to you, uh, our moon has such an interesting tilt compared to Earth. So uh, the way the moon is tilted, uh, it has never really been completely explained. But uh, this article kind of tries to explain it uh, with the idea of having all of these meteorites and all of these rocks falling into, on our planet. And as they pass by the moon, they slightly shift its tilt. And so this person uh, tries to describe this sort of a multi-million year process where every time a rock passes by the moon, it tilt, it shifts its tilt a little bit and then crashes back on our planet. I think it's a pretty interesting theory, whether it's correct or not, time will tell, uh, but it definitely explains why our moon has this tilt, because otherwise we don't really know why. And then lastly, we have this new study that suggests that maybe, just maybe, Earth is surrounded by these filaments of dark matter. Now that's really, really interesting and really intriguing because if it's true, we need we shouldn't even be looking that far for dark matter. We, all we need to do is launch a satellite that tries to collect it around our planet and we might actually catch it. Now you can read about this uh, theory in the article in the description below and definitely learn a little bit more about dark matter that way.
Now let's talk a little bit more about the channel and also the events uh, of, I guess, our lives and uh, specifically the mustache. It's going to leave us tomorrow because November 30th is when I'm going to uh, probably rip it apart or rip it off. Uh, that's That actually really hurts. Now I'm just going to shave it off unless someone has a suggestion. And if you do, post it in, in the comments below because if your suggestion is good, maybe we'll do that. Also, we're almost at 7,000 subscribers, and this is amazing news, of course, uh, because the channel has been growing relatively quick, and it's all thanks to you amazing, amazing people. And uh, I still don't really know what we're going to do for 10,000 subscribers, but there's something special coming up. Uh, if you have ideas, post them in the description, post them in the comment box, that is, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Now, what you're looking at right now is actually something that, uh, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm going to actually try to explain it to you right now. And also this right here is uh, Asylum Jam. This is something that happened a few weeks ago, and it's actually um, the third annual um, gathering of people trying to create these kind of horror games that try to, um, well, first of all, they raise awareness of mental illness, and but they also try to steer away from common... Um, types of horror games where, you know, you have your mental asylums and crazy people, they try to make mental illness as something that is uh, humane and acceptable and not something that you should be afraid of. And so what this essentially is, is it's uh, basically it's a competition of people creating horror games and you can play all of them for free. They're actually all available right here. I'm posting this in the description and some of them are actually kind of scary. So do uh, take a look at them because uh, a lot of these games, when they become popular, they actually are then released on Steam and often become early access access games or possibly even uh, fully released games that will then go on and become, you know, popular horror games. So take a look at them before they become too popular. But the reason I'm talking about this is, of course, it's because it's all related to why I'm doing this. So uh, a lot of men around the world uh, grow mustache uh, for different reasons, specifically to raise awareness of some kind of a health thing. And for many men, it's actually mental health awareness. And this is something that is really personal to me because a um, long time ago when I was still in high school, um, I was diagnosed with something that caused me to drop out of high school. Essentially, uh, because I had a teacher who would not really accept me for who I was, specifically because of my mental disorder. She decided to make my life so miserable, and this was actually ironically my math teacher, uh, that I ended up dropping out and was very close to not finishing high school at all. And then my mom came in and she kind of saved me, took me to a new high school where I managed to have better teachers who then helped me to succeed and go on and become a teacher myself. And today I am a math teacher and one of the reasons I became a math teacher is because I actually wanted to be a person that this person wasn't to me. So in other words, I want to be supportive, but specifically I actually also want to be supportive of, of people with mental disorders. Mental illness is actually very prevalent. Uh, a lot of YouTubers often talk about it uh, because many of them actually are suffering from things like depression or bipolar disorder. And it's actually a lot more common than you think. And for that reason, every year I try to actually raise money and try to uh, donate money to uh, various causes. And I think this year is going to be and so this is the charity that I'll be supporting this year, and it's called Able Gamers Charity that essentially um, supports people with disabilities and uses video games and various uh, video game systems to try to support people that would not be able to play video games otherwise. Or in other words, it also promotes uh, awareness of uh, d various disabilities and also various mental health issues by using uh, video games. So there's actually three kind of people that often participate in this particular charity, and this is a gamer with disability, uh, or you can be a developer that wants to include a game, uh, and uh, basically uh, some of the proceeds from your sales will go to this charity, or you can be a gamer that just wants to make a difference in the world. And so what I'm going to be doing is all the money that I raised, I'm going to be donating to them and then shaving off my mustache until next year and then doing the same thing next year, but possibly with, this, with a different charity or with some other organization that I find. And of course, you can consider doing the same. So the, I'm posting the link for this particular organization in the description. So you can go there and read about them and also possibly donate as well. Anyway, so this is it for my mustache for this year, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video, learn a little bit more about space, and a little bit more about universe. Next week, we're going to have seven more videos at least, and possibly more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll game you guys later. If you have any comments to leave, leave them in the comment box below, and I'm going to reply as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, I love you so much, and game you later. Bye-bye. And you can say goodbye to the mustache until next year.